time has come for me to present to you my final message. And I want to leave you with something that is precious, something that is dear, and very important to my heart. And that is, present to you our Heavenly Father. This study comes from Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Last Sabbath, I talked about the introduction. What Jesus said in the beginning of that sermon. The beatitude, the eight blessings. But today, we want to go into a deeper understanding of this sermon. So I, I have this slide. Yes, that's the entire chapter 5, 6, and 7. And basically, only the first two verses in the beginning and basically last two verses at the end are in black. But you can see, as you can see, uh, basically the entire sermon of Jesus completely in red, meaning these are the words of Jesus. And all of you, you already know, I like to look for repetition. Why? When, some, when a topic is being repeated over and over again, that means that topic, it gotta, it's got to be very, very important. So that's what I did. I read this sermon over and over again, and I discovered that Jesus, his main subject matter, his main topic, his theme in his sermon was really our Heavenly Father. From the beginning until the end. Yes, you can say it's about salvation. Yes, you can say it's about uh, being born again or be a good Christian or it's about following God. But really, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus came down to the earth, when he was speaking to the multitude of the people of Israel, he knew that many of those people, they did not know about the Father in heaven. So Jesus, he needed to come down and to reintroduce the Father to them so that they understand who they worship and they understand how much the Father loves them. Listen. You know how we want to go to heaven? Yes. And you know how, you know what is required to go to heaven? To have faith. Yes. And you know what happens when you have faith? Your life will change. And when we say your life needs to be changed, we're talking about your character has to be changed. So many times, this is what we do. Oh, I need to change. I have to be a good Christian. I have to, be, uh, I have to follow the teachings of the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And then what you do, what you start doing is, you start focusing, listen, you start focusing on you. I got to do this. I got to change that. I have to do this. So then you then become very self-centered Christian, even though you might be devoted, even though you might be dedicated, even though you may be sounding so spiritual, but you end up becoming self-absorbing, trying to see how you can become better. And you have a success in that some ways, but maybe not the true uh, transformation because you are looking to yourself, looking to how you can become better, always judging yourself, judging other people, and then you get discouraged and, and disappointed. You get a little confused and you may want to give up. And then you say, okay, I will try it again. And then failure, and then you might, and you're again, uh, you have self-pity and disappointment again. And then you're thinking about giving up. And then you say, okay, but I, I want to go to heaven. And then you get up again. Do you know what I'm talking about? That yo-yo experience, ups and downs. I mean, it is true, even sincere, even genuine Christian may have struggles, may go up and down. But let me help you with something, and that is this. Do not focus on yourself. Now, when it comes to, do you understand, do you need to understand yourself? Yes. What does that mean? Do you understand 
you, your thoughts and feelings? Yes. Do you need to understand who you are, your motivations, your intention of your heart? Yes. However, you should take time to identify who you are exactly so that you know what to confess before God. However, do not stay there. You need to focus on our Heavenly Father. Listen, listen very carefully what I'm about to tell you. Your true character transformation is really, it's not really, not entirely based upon your effort. Does, does it require your effort? Yes. And when we say your effort, what are we talking about? Your decision. Your self-sacrificing decisions. That effort. Cooperation with God. That is required. However, your effort, your decision to follow God, surrender your life, this decision has to be motivated, listen, it has to be motivated not by just going to heaven, not just to survive eternally, not just to be saved. No, no, no. Those motivations are good, but not good enough. The motivation has to be deeper, more profound, more firm. What motivation? The motivation should be based upon how much you know, okay? How much you know about how much our Heavenly Father loves you so much. That has to be your motivating factor. If you don't have that motivation, it will become very, very difficult, hard, burdensome, heavy to live a Christian life. And I'm sure, I guarantee, may, there are many of you, I don't know who you are, there are many of you, right now, you're feeling that your Christian life is very heavy. Drag. There's no joy. But today, I want to tell you what Jesus said about our Heavenly Father. Because your character transformation is really based upon the way you know your Heavenly Father. So let's see what Jesus said. So this is what I did. I looked at all the verses in chapter 5, 6, and 7 when Jesus mentioned the word Father. Okay? That's what I did. It's very simple. I looked up all the verses where, where Jesus says the word Father. And let's see how Jesus introduced the Father. Here we go. The first one. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And what? Glorify your what? Father which is in heaven. So this text, listen. In his sermon, this is the first time Jesus mentioned about the Father. Therefore, pay even closer attention when he introduced the topic first. And in this text, the Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see whose good works? Your good works. So other men will see your good works, but glorify what? Your Father. Very interesting. Usually, ladies and gentlemen, when people see your good works, they usually glorify who? You, exactly. But somehow, the Bible says, when people see your good works, okay, they end up glorifying the Father. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, there, there is a big difference between good works and good works. What makes a difference? Good works done with the motivation of self-attention. And good works done based upon Truly giving God the glory. So if you do good works to give God the glory, people will feel that you are really doing it for God. Therefore, they end up praising God, not you. They may say, God blessed you. Praise the Lord because of you. But they are really praising God. They don't say to you, oh, you're so good. You're the best person. Nobody like it. Nobody's like you. 
Oh, you're so, you sing so well. Oh, you're, you preach so well. No, 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 Mo. I mean, people may say that even though the person has done a genuine good works. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. But down deep inside, people should feel that you are giving God the glory. What do you say? So then, okay. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus saying, listen, Israel, listen, Jewish people. I know many of you are doing good works in order to go to heaven. But stop doing those good works in order to go to heaven. Do your good works so that the people, when they see you do good works, they will turn to the Father. So let your good works lead other people to follow God, not you. Do you understand? That's what Jesus is saying. So then, how should we glory, how can we do good works in order to glorify our Father? Is that a good question? In what way should we do our good works in order to cause other people to glorify God? That's true religion. How should we do that? Well, let's take a little journey to all the verses in the sermon where Jesus mentioned Father. So next time the Father is mentioned is this one. That ye may be the what? Children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So second time Jesus mentioned Father, he mentioned in the top, with the topic of that ye may be the one. Children of your Father. Now why did he say what he said? So this is what I did. I looked at the verse before. Because I want to know how we can be a child of our Father. How we can be children of our Father. So, I read the ver verse before, and it says, verse 44, But I say unto you, love your what? Enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that what? despisefully use you and persecute you. So look at all the action words, all the action words in verse 44. What is it? Number one, love. Number two, bless. Number three, do good. Number four, pray. So love, bless, do good, and pray for who? Pray for who? It's like this. Enemy. But who are your enemies? Those that curse you. Okay? In what way? Uh, 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 why do they curse you? Because they hate you. Exactly. So in what way people hate you? They despitefully what? Use you. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you feel when people despitefully use you? How do you feel? You know, we say, oh, the Bible says, love your enemies. And then you know what you do? You know what you do? Okay, I love my enemies. You just say it in your mind and thinking that that's how you love your enemies. And, and, but in reality, in reality, you know what you're doing? I love my enemies in distance. In distance. So then, how are you going to show your love, blessing them, do good to them, and pray for them? You, maybe you're thinking, I just pray for them. I just pray for them in secret because you are secretly also hating them. Have you done that before? I love my enemies, okay, but you're not doing anything for them. How many of you want to be children of our Heavenly Father? Okay, some people are not raising your hands. You must have some lot of enemies. Do you know what is a natural reaction when somebody despisefully use you? You know what it's like to be used? What's your reaction? What do you, what do you say? This is what? Abuse, and abuse is what? 
injustice. When you're treated unjustly, you feel as though you have to what? Justify it. You have to? Revenge. Exactly. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, maybe you don't have that kind of problem here in this beautiful church with this many people. I'm sure all of you, you love each other so much. Oh, the love is just flowing over. I'm sure there's no problem here. I'm sure there are no enemies here. And you probably say, yeah, I don't have any enemies. But listen, it's very simple. Who are you ignoring? Who do you wish that they should not be here? I know. Maybe you are just fair. By legally, legally speaking, maybe you're right. They did wrong to you. They used you. They should be punished. But then the Bible says, what? Love them, bless them, do good to them, and pray for them, that ye may be the what? Children of your father. So what does that mean? Let's put it together. Remember the first time? Let your light so shine before men, yeah, that they may see your good works. So then, what is good works? What kind of works is good works that the, it will cause other men to praise God? What good works? Loving your enemies. Doing good to your enemies. That's true religion. Do you understand? Okay, let's move on. We have so much to cover. And then the third time, the Father has mentioned, be therefore, what? Perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Ooh, is not that a high calling? Be perfect. How many of you like to be perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect? Okay, a few hands went up. You, I'm sure many of you were thinking, wow, there's no way I can be perfect. And when you think of perfection, what are you thinking of perfection? This is, what, this, is how, this is how many people interpret perfection. I have to dress perfectly. I have to walk perfectly. I have to talk perfect. I have to be nice. I have to eat my food perfect. I have to chew my vegetables 40 times. Yeah, I have to get up in the morning, pray, do my devotion, perfect, yes? My house all organized, perfect, yeah? yeah this is what people are thinking. I mean, are those things good? Yeah, they're good, they're good, really good. K keep on doing them. But this perfection is not just, you know, perfect looking. Because in book of Luke, we have a similar passage in a different expression. Same thing expressed in a different way. What is it? It says, be ye therefore, what? Merciful as your Father is also is merciful. So when the Bible says be perfect, God is, the, Jesus is really saying, be perfect in what? Being merciful. There are a lot of people, oh, they can, they know the Bible, they dress well, they may eat well, they're perfect in their life. But then, they are not perfect. Why? Because they hate their enemies. They cannot show mercy, kindness to those that despitefully use them. So Jesus had the, 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 the religion at the core, at the root of the problem. What, the, what is the problem? The problem is we do not know how to show unconditional love. Many times, my friends, our love is completely conditional. Comes with liability, comes with uh, conditions, comes with uh, insurance, comes with all the requirements, transaction, you have to sign it. But this unconditional love that the God is asking us to express, it is something that is beyond human. That's the reason why we need God, because this kind of love doesn't come from us, it only comes from our Heavenly Father. And then the, the next time the Father is mentioned, take heed that ye do not your al alms, before man, alms are basically talking about good works, good deeds, 
things that you do for those that are in need. So take heed that you do not do your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your one. Father, which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, look, when you do good works, remember, very, very first time, do your good works before men. See, that's how he began when he talked about the Father. And then he says, when you do your good works, don't do them to show off. Do not glorify yourself with your religious acts. Matthew chapter 6, verse 4, the Bible says that thy alms may be in what? Secret. And thy Father which is, says in secret, uh, himself shall reward thee openly. So Jesus keeps saying, look, when you do good works, don't do it to show off, but do it secretly. Does that mean you can never sh like reveal yourself? You always, to be like, you always have to be like a ninja when you do good works? Like a secret agent? No. There are times that you can show yourself, but the attitude, the mindset, your character is not to show off but do things in secret. That's how you can do good works. And when men see you do good works, they will glorify the Father. And then the Jesus said, but thou, when thou what? Prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which sees in secret, shall reward thee openly. Oh, the repetition right here. Repetition. What repetition? Jesus saying, there's something else that you got to do in secret. What is that? Praying. Not only doing good works, but when you pray, pray in secret. Why? Because back in those days, people like to pray. When they pray in public, oh, they pray so fancy, dancy, and, and people think that he is holy, one not. Jesus says, don't pray like that. You know, some people, when they pray up here, I mean, not people here. I don't know. I don't know who you are. But some people, different places. I don't know. Okay, anyhow. But some people, when they pray, you know, in public, oh, they pray long. Sometimes longer than a sermon. <laughs> so long. Yeah? And sometimes they write their uh, prayer down, you know, they, and they, 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 they close one eye, open one eye. And they, they just long prayer, you know? It's like they're preaching, you know? Like, ah. You know why some, not, every, not everybody, I don't know, you know people's motivation, but not everybody, but you know why some people pray so long in the front? Because they don't pray at home. <laughs> so they make up the time. So when they stand up here like, oh, I didn't pray, I don't pray. So let me just pray long now. So then the people, you know, people say, the only time that people say amen is when he finishes prayer. Amen. Oh, it's done. I'm so glad the prayer is done. <laughs> but during the time of prayer, people are like, oh, why so long? You know, why is he talking about the history of, I don't know, just, <laughs> you understand? Sometimes people can use religious things to uh, cover themselves. God says, don't do that. When you pray, you pray in secret. Does that mean we always have to pray in secret? No, 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 no. What does that mean, secret? You gotta have a prayer life that you can express things in secret. You understand? Which means, do you tell God all your secrets? Are you really intimate when you pray? That's what Jesus is talking about. You gotta be real. Don't hide. Completely tell him how you feel, your motivation, what you think. Just tell him exactly. Do that. Have that kind of prayer in your secret chamber. And when you pray in public, please pray short. Have mercy upon the people. Okay. All right. And then the Bible says, and then he says, chapter 6, verse 8, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knows what things ye have, what? Need of, before ye ask him. Now, Jesus mentioned this because Jesus is saying some people when they pray, they pray in vain repetition. Vain repetition over and over and over and over again. As though God cannot hear them. But no, no, no. Jesus is saying, look, our father. So here Jesus is telling us, 
who our Father is. Our Father what? He knows what you need. He knows. Trust Him. He knows. Before you even say it, He knows. Trust Him. Continuing. After this manner, therefore pray, E. Our Father, which are in what? Heaven, hallowed be thy. Very interesting. This prayer, the prayer that Jesus asked us to pray, it begins with our Father. I like that. You know why? Because when Jesus said, look, when you come and pray, when you say, when you, when you do your prayer, say our Father. Why? When you say our Father, it's not same as my Father. My Father, give me this day my daily bread. Forgive my sin. No, it's so selfish. Our Father, when you say our Father, you're thinking of other people. Give us this day, us, our daily bread. Not only feed me, but feed my brothers and sisters. There's always that, that heart of love that goes out to other people when you pray. Because a lot of times when people pray, it's so selfish. They only pray for their health, their family, their business, their children. Yeah? They're so earnest about that. And then at the end, you kind of cover everybody and then be with everybody else. Amen. <laughs> when was the last time you actually prayed for somebody else? Earnestly. It was intense. Do you have that kind of love going out? So Jesus is saying, pray. Not only for yourself, for, but for other people as well. Continuing. For ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly what? Father will also forgive you. So here Jesus is making it very clear that if you cannot forgive others, our Father cannot what? Forgive you. See how everything all lined up? Very simple. Look. When you do good works, do this or that, other people will glorify God. How? Love your enemies. Do good to them. Me, meaning, be merciful. That's how you become perfect. Okay? And when you pray, oh, when you do good works, do it so that you give God the glory. When you pray, you do it in secret so that you give God the glory. And then he talks about, if you cannot forgive others, God cannot forgive you. It's all connected. Here's the reason why. Continuing. The Bible says, that thou appear not unto men, to what? Fast, but thy Father which is in secret. Thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Notice with me, in Matthew chapter 6, there are three things, how many things? Three things Jesus said, you got to do it in secret. What are those three things? Number one, alms, meaning good works. Number two, praying. Number three, Fasting, fasting. Listen, listen. Pay attention. When it comes to religion, okay, there are a lot of things that we do in the religion, but Jesus only mentioned three things. You know why? Because, the three, because these three things are regarded as, or when you do these three things, you are regarded as very religious. Yes or no? For example, when somebody, how do you, this is how you, please don't do this, but for my uh, expo, uh, expression, uh, for help you to understand what I'm talking about, just listen to me. This is how you can rank somebody's spirituality. When somebody's doing, you know, good works, helping other people, yeah, helping the poor, when you, when you see people like that, how do you feel? Wow, that's really good. Wow, wow, really spiritual, religious. But then, if you know that that person is a praying person, his or her spirituality goes even higher. What? She prays three hours a day? Wow. What? She prays five times a day? Ooh, she must be holy. You understand what I'm talking about? Do you understand? And, or, and on top of that, if you fast, whoa, you're almost like God. <laughs> you, what, you, what, you don't eat? You forego eating pancit? Wow, you don't eat lunch? You skip breakfast? 
all day you don't eat and you do it like twice a week, you gotta be, you gotta be really next to God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Even in other religions like Islam, they regard praying, yes or no? Ah, and fasting, Ramadan, yes? You see, even other religions like Hinduism, fasting, really religious, right? And Buddhism, doing good works. You, you understand? It doesn't matter what religion. All religion regards doing good works, praying, and fasting as, wow, you are really spiritual and religious. But Jesus says, when you do these things, don't do them in front of other people. Why? Because you can, because people can easily, I'm doing good works, I am praying, I'm fasting, instead of loving your enemies. And you can easily do that too. I'm coming to church, I'm giving tithes and offering to the church, uh, I am leading out in Pathfinder, I'm leading out in the choir, I, I'm, doing, I'm giving Bible studies, I'm doing that. Uh, but then you still cherish you still maintain unforgiving spirit, becoming unmerciful. And Jesus is saying, you may do all the religious things, but if you cannot truly love your enemies, you cannot be children of God. The true essence of spirituality and the, the true religion, Jesus is mentioning it right here. And then continuing, so then Jesus said, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your what? Heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Do you know the birds and the animals, do they, do they uh, farm? Do they go to grocery? Do they work to make money? What am I trying to say? Don't work, don't shop, don't do farming? No, no, no. You can do all of that, no problem. But look, if God can feed the animals in the world, you are much, what? You're much better than they. So listen, listen, Jesus said, Let's put it together. Jesus says, let your what? Light so shine, right? So then, how do you shine the light? How do you shine that light? How? Very simple. Internally, in your gut, in your mind, in your heart, you have this merciful, loving spirit to all the people that hate you, despitefully use you, people that bother you. It doesn't matter. You just have that Genuine, unconditional love. When you have that, you're shining. Okay? And when you do your religious things, doing good works, praying, fasting, if you do them, not to show off, but you do them to have a closer relationship with God, it shines. So Jesus is really telling you how to shine, to give God the glory. And here, what Jesus is saying, don't worry. Don't worry about how you survive. Trust your heavenly Father. So right now, ladies and gentlemen, in, in the audience, okay, come on. Is there anybody here worrying about uh, how to pay your uh, bills, how to pay your mortgage, how to pay your rent, how to pay for your car, how to pay for your school, how to pay for money for your children? for your husband, for your wife, for your family. Are you worrying that right now? Yeah, some of you? Yeah, you only make a few pesos. You're like, oh, how am I going to survive? Are you worried that right? Are you worrying that right now? If you are, ladies and gentlemen, your worry will block the light of God shining through you. So what Jesus is saying, look, if you want to be truly the light of the world, you got to have this mindset of, I completely trust in God. Show me that on your face right now. Come on, show me. Practice. Yeah, yeah, practice sometime. You look at yourself in the mirror. 
If you're always worried, stressed out, walking like that, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you get scared. Oh. Yeah. Look at yourselves. You gotta practice what? Trust. And not concern, not worry, confidence. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you should become lazy? No, no. You're diligent. You work hard. You work hard without worrying. Some people, they work hard with worry. Why? I got to make this money. I need this job. I have to do this. I got to do that because I have to support my family. I'm responsible. I'm the man of the house. I got to take care. So you have this face. Your wrinkles are all shaped in such a way it says you worry a lot. Do you know anybody looking like that? Why don't you just look at yourselves? So, Jesus saying, you want to be the light of the world? You got to learn how to trust God. Can you have that today? Can you start practicing? Show me on your faces. Come on. I still see some of you. You have, you have this faith. My husband didn't give me any roses today. He didn't kiss me today. Your lips are kind of falling down. Come on. Forget your husband. You have Jesus Christ, amen? Your husband loves you. He does. He's just a man. He doesn't know how to express sometimes. Yeah? We, we are like that. We just love all the time inside. I love you. Yeah, we're, we're like this. So don't worry about it, okay? So come on, show me on your face that you uh, just, ah, uh, like, you, you should, I know you're not, you don't have millions of pesos, okay, no problem, but believe that you have millions of pesos. Where? In Heavenly Bank. Where's your credit card? It's called prayer. Amen? And God will provide. Don't worry. You trust him, he will not fail you. He will not. He will protect you. So just because you, 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 you have more worry things doesn't mean you make more money. What God wants, trust. Because you cannot really have relationship with God if you cannot trust him. And then the Bible says, for after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father knows that you have what? So give me a face that says, my Father knows all my needs. Yeah, and carry that, okay? I know sometimes many Seventh Adventists, they're always thinking of end time, last days, the mark of the beast, the last plagues, time of trouble, persecution. You walk, now it's okay to study the last days, but don't walk around looking like last day on your face. Yeah? I know it's a serious topic, but don't be so, oh, you know, we gotta get ready. You know, don't be that. You, oh, that face is like a constipation face. <laughs> don't do that. Relax. Trust in God. Build courage, intelligence. Faith, okay, pleasantness, all right, outgoing, pleasant uh, uh, attitude, treat others equally, love those who are not loved. Isn't this a good thing? Amen? That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying we should do those things. In, the, in this most important sermon on the mount, here it says, trust your heavenly Father. And then Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. You cannot forget this. This is Matthew 7, 11. Okay? Don't forget that. If he then, being what? Evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give what? Good things to them that ask him. So you got to trust that God is more than happy to give you good gifts. Even, even, bad criminals will take a good care of their children. How much more? Your Heavenly Father. 
And then Matthew 7, verse 21, the Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that what? Doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So ladies and gentlemen, here, uh, what a, a awesome a message of uh, actually a judgment. Because, look at this. In verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not what? Prophesied in thy name. And in thy name have what? Cast out devils. In thy name and done many what? Wonderful works. You see, look at all these people. Look at all these people doing wonderful works, prophesying, casting out demons. Do you think these people are religious or not religious? They're, they are kind of religious, but yet not saved. They're religious, prophesying, teaching the Bible, but not saved. Casting out demons, whoa, not saved. Done many wonderful works, not saved. Why? Because... Jesus says, and then will I profess unto them, I never what? Knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So what is going on? See, Jesus said, only he that doeth the what? Will of my Father. So my good Seventh-day Adventist friends, when you read that text right there, it says, will of my Father, what thought comes to your mind first? What is the will of the God? What is the will of God? Come on, you tell me. What is the will of God? Be a good Seventh Adventist. What's the usual answer? Keeping Ten Commandments, yes or no? Yeah? Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, you're only thinking of keeping Ten Commandments. Is that a wrong answer? No, that's a correct answer. But the deeper answer is this. The will of, my, the will of God. You know what is the will of God? According to Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. What is it? Shine your light. That's the will of God. Love your enemies, that's the will of God. Be merciful, that's the will of God. When you do alms and pray, when you fast, do them secretly, that's the will of God. Do not worry about tomorrow, that's the will of God. Do not worry about how to survive, that's the will of God. And when you come to God, believe that He will give to you, that is the will of God. Do you understand? Some people say, I am keeping Ten Commandments, but they always worry, always judgmental, always negative, always like high pressure. Yeah? Do you know any elder like this? <sighs> yeah, I gotta be, I got, I'm gonna make my family spiritual. So we're gonna have morning devotion every day. And the, and the father, and the elder, the father, he says, okay, everybody, get it together for morning worship. But then, you know, sometimes children, they're a little late, and the mother busy cooking. And then because the, the rest of the family are not coming so fast, the elder goes, where is everybody? Right now, you better come. And then he kind of raises his voice and kind of shout. Why? Why does he shout? He has a burden. What burden? He wants to save his family. Like, oh, I got to save my family, but he looks like a devil. Good motivation, but he does not know how to do it. You understand? What about going to church on time? It's time. Yeah? Come on, right now, we gotta go. Why do they wanna go to church on time? Because going to church on time, it looks good before the elders. So in order to maintain your reputation, you got to have your family on time. I told you to put that makeup on yesterday. Oh, why are you, why, 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 why are you, why are you touching that? Come on. Why do you have to check your Facebook right now? Come on, let's go. I mean, it's good to be on time, amen? Yeah, can't you see? We can try to do a lot of good things, but our character is not changed. Can you see? So the Father says, the will of our Father is really shining the light. Merciful, loving, genuine, true, and most of all, Jesus end with the best. No worries. <laughs> My house is burning right now. <laughs> Praise God.
Everything is gone. <laughs> you know what that means? I'm going to get a new house. How? I don't know, but I'll get one. Amen? Don't worry, you got to... See, when, when, when we have a visitor come to our church, you don't have to say it. Our visitors, just looking at your faces, wow, this is a church of worries. <laughs> and, and they feel it in their gut and they go away. I don't want to come here. But if you're all relaxed, genuine, worry-free, always trusting, loving, they, you treat them like a family, oh, they want to come back. What do you say? So can this church be like that? I know you're already a loving church. You have shown me, but can you be more loving? Amen. Amen. That's what God is asking. That is our Heavenly Father. That's how God is going to judge us. I know the word judgment is a heavy topic, but listen, the reality is we will be judged based upon are we like Him or not. So when Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back, He wants to come back for, to take away the people that looks like him. Why? Do you know what it's like to have children? I have three children. But you know what it's like to have children? They look like you. <laughs> look at him. His nose is fat as mine. <laughs> he looks just like me. Look at his ear. Wow, just like those satellite dish. I don't care what he looks like, as long as he looks like me, <laughs> I'm so happy. You understand? When Jesus comes back, he wants to take away the people that looks like him. So, in the, uh, so basically, this is the story. Glorify your Father. How? Be merciful and loving to your enemies. How do you do that? Do not glorify yourself with religious acts. And what else do you do? You can have complete trust in our Heavenly Father and this is the will of our Heavenly Father. So would you like to perhaps restart that relationship with our Heavenly Father? Amen? Amen. Would you like that? Ladies and gentlemen, Father, the idea of Father is very important to me. You know why? I lost my father when I was 10. My father died when I was 10. Can, you tell, can I tell you a little bit of my story? Can I tell you? I'm going to show you some pictures. I want to show you pictures of my father and my mom. My father and my mom. <laughs> Who do I look like? <laughs> you know, my mother used to tell me a story. Our, our father, he's like six foot. For a Korean man, back in those days, oh, that's, that's a giant, right? Plus, he likes to wear, you know, big sunglasses, like a good Terminator. <laughs> um, but my, my mother used to tell me a story. One time, uh, they were in a bus, and then my father saw somebody snatching some lady's purse. And my father decided to run after him. And then, and the story goes that my father grabbed him and the guy turned around. And when he turned around, he saw this big Korean guy with sunglasses. And I'm guessing my father said, give it to me. <laughs> yeah, my father was that, like that righteous man, you know? Oh, I, and then one time they were uh, in, in line, you know, standing in line to get in the, get in the bus, right? And there was this guy trying to uh, cut in, yeah? And my mother said, my father grabbed him by his neck and picked him up. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and my father, he knows how to get good bargain. Very easy for him. Uh, he takes us to, uh, he took me to a meat market one time, meat market. And the owner says, oh, please give me 700. And my father says, father looked at him. I was right there. My father says, 500. And the owner says, okay, okay, take, take, take. <laughs> take. And there are times that my father goes to the market, you know, open market, and then he sees grandma, grandma, right, selling candies. Yeah, she's sitting on the floor. Yeah, candies. My father, big heart, he buys the, all the candies for her. He says, grandma, go back home. My father. Yeah. 
Uh, was he perfect? No. But that's my father. But my father, that's their uh, engagement picture, and then they got married. And then after they got married, they had uh, three children, my two sisters above me, sister, sister, and then me. Uh, because, you know, in Korea, boy is very important, son is very important. So if his daughter, they keep having children, yeah, until they hit a jackpot. <laughs> Ding! Okay, we're done. We have a son now. Yeah. And so, so then, <laughs> I came out. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and I came out. Uh, and then, um, that's me right there. I was a Catholic. This is when I became... Uh, huh? See, I even forgot the word. I, I, so I became Catholic right there, see? Look, do I look happy? You know why I look like that? Because my sisters, they literally, they grab my ear like this. They say, you gotta go to Catholic church. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I got my name, Pedro, uh, Peter, yeah, see right there. Um, but then, this is when I was age, 11, and my father already passed away age 10. I was only 10 years old. He died of leukemia. Uh, within 16 days after the hospitalized, he passed away so fast. 16 days. Not even, you have six months or three months. 16 days, it's gone. <laughs> on, the, on the day of burial, it was raining so sad. You know, See me? Uh, I'm so lucky to have this picture. You know why? I'm graduating from elementary school, but nobody came for me. My mother busy working. My sister is in school. My father passed away. I got this picture because my friend took the picture for me. <laughs> you know, just looking back, <laughs> uh, that's a sad face. Sad. So my mom, she decided to, um, I don't know why. So my mom decided to uh, go to America with uh, contract marriage. So I came to America, here I am. <laughs> playing American football. Uh, good thing I was a big Korean dude. Because um, those, there were some big American guys. So here I am playing football. And then I got into, remember the story? Uh, they introduced me as a King Cobra. Would you like to see some pictures of my King Cobra days? Yeah? There you go. I won first place during that competition. Here I am dancing in a club, and then I was doing some graffiti artwork. Here I am posing, and then here I'm doing break dancing. Yeah. And then, age 17, I became, uh, joined the Seventh Adventist Church, Korean Seventh Adventist Church in New Jersey. And, um, and I got baptized. That's me getting baptized. And all this time, in my days of wondering, you know, dancing and doing this kind of things, there are times that I cry at night because I miss my father. But this was a day I got a new father. Our Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Our Heavenly Father. He will never leave me. So, yep, that's what happened. And ever since then, the Bible, the truth, the Word of God, it is so precious to me. 
So with my heavenly father, I got married uh, many years later. That's my wife, Lena. She's not Filipino or Filipina. She is Korean. <laughs> um, I look Filipino, huh? <laughs> oh, Filipino. Yeah, that's me. Um, we got married, and then um, guess what? <laughs> I became father. I have three children. Our first child, daughter, Isabella. And then, ladies and gentlemen, God gave us a special child, second child, Gabriel. He has Down syndrome. I call it a gift from heaven. We call him Gabriel, angel. He's an angel. When he smiles, he's, he's perfectly normal. When he poops in his pants, he's not normal. <laughs> but when he smiles, he's, he's an angel. Amen? <laughs> and then we have our uh, third child, Emmanuel. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the, the father experience that I had with my Heavenly Father? Helped me to be a better father to my children. And I experience more the love of God through this, this relationship. And that's what Jesus is saying. I know sometimes people make religion and the Bible really complicated. But ladies and gentlemen, it's really all about the true desire of every soul. We all want to be loved by the Father and we all want to love. And we can experience that today. Amen? Amen? May that be your revelation. May that be your enlightenment. May that be your journey. May that be your commitment to experience the revelation of Heavenly Father in your life. And He will never forsake you and He will never leave you. How many of you you want that experience. Oh, if you do, please stand with me today as we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for truly a truly wonderful message from the Bible. We see it clearly what you're trying to say. Yes, there are doctrines and there are things that you want us to experience and keep. And because you want us to have an intimate, close relationship with you. And there are many of us here today, perhaps we didn't have good father. Maybe no father. Or maybe you had a father, but just like me, for a short time. And we understand that the problem began in the family and it, it goes to the community and the, and the country and the rest of the world. All problems begin in the home, but you're saying to us today, we have to restore the true heavenly family in homes. So now you're telling us about our heavenly father, how we need to have this relationship with him how we need to trust Him, how we, have, how we need to be real with Him and to be like Him in the areas of loving our enemies so that we may shine the light of God to others so that others may glorify You. So our Heavenly Father, forgive our sins, wash us clean, and give us a renewed spirit and help us to see you as the most loving God and never leave you because you will never, never forsake us as long as we are looking to you. Thank you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.